morning, Atlantis. Planning Ship is here with you. How are you doing today? Good morning, Houston. Uh, nice to hear your voice. We're all with you. Okay, Ken, and we have some work for you today. I hate to uh, get you started so early, but if you could go on up to spec 20, the forward jets are getting a little cold, and we'd like to get some firings on them. Go ahead. We need to select A3 on the DAP, so that'd be an item one plus three. That'll tighten the dead bands and get us a couple of firings. Houston, Atlantis, with some uh, answers for the internet questions. Okay, we're ready for the internet questions. Go right ahead. Bulky H-10 from Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, asks a pretty tough one. In what ways is the Mir space station better than the space shuttle? And we, we started to try to come up with a list of ways and then realize what you would really be comparing are apples and oranges, uh, really two completely different vehicles. Uh, Mir, of course, was designed to stay on orbit uh, for a long time, and it's uh, uh, approaching nearly uh, 10 years on orbit. And the space shuttle was designed for frequent uh, trips to and from space, carrying a fairly large amount of cargo. So to say uh, Mir is better uh, than the shuttle in some ways is only true because it does a different job. So for staying on orbit for a very long time, Mir does have advantages, uh, and that it is uh, expandable. They can change the configuration much more living volume uh, in Mir than we do in the shuttle. Uh, also, the shuttle is, uh, correction, Mir is powered with solar arrays, so we, they do not have to carry liquid oxygen and hydrogen uh, to generate electricity. On the other hand, uh, the shuttle uh, has advantages in being able to carry large payloads and a large number of people uh, to and from a low Earth orbit. Uh, it's also a reusable space vehicle. So uh, they're just designed for two very different purposes. So comparing them is uh, perhaps uh, not, a, uh, not something uh, that's very easy to do. Okay, Bill, we copied that, and we'll pass that along. Thanks very much. Okay, and the next one is from Bill, uh, Bill Derbyshire, age 40, Aberdeen, New Jersey. Uh, Bill as uh, asks uh, why we throw away the external tank. Uh, he writes, it seems a waste to throw away the ET just as you attain orbit. Would it make sense to at least park the used tanks and save this valuable resource for future missions? And while certainly uh, we hate not to conserve all the resources that we can, in order to park an external tank on orbit, we would have to be able to circularize its orbit, which would mean either carrying it all the way to low Earth orbit with the shuttle, in which case it would remain... Uh, in, or, uh, in orbit with the shuttle and would ultimately be a hazard uh, to other vehicles. Also, without um, self-contained propulsion devices, its orbit would soon decay and it would re-enter anyway. And then uh, also, even to uh, another alternative would be to have a self-contained uh, propulsion device on the external tank, in which case it could circularize its own orbit. But in any, ca any case, the cost to do that uh, would probably be uh, significantly higher than the uh, conservation of resources we would realize by uh, keeping the external tanks on orbit. Okay, Bill, we copied that also. Well put. Thank you. And I'll uh, stop with uh, a third one uh, here from uh, Gerald Nieves Caro, H-12, Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. He asks, how many hours of sleep do astronauts get while in space? It's a sleep wrestle. How long did your body take to adjust to the weightlessness before being able to sleep? Well, the number of hours we sleep varies just as it does on the ground. Now, during this flight, we've been scheduled for between six and eight hours of sleep. And uh, we tend to be so busy up here that we get that we do get fatigued, so the sleep is restful. And uh, we've been able to sleep uh, since the first night we're up here.
Atlanta, Houston. Atlanta, Houston. We're two minutes to LOS, and we'll pick you up. Ten minutes later on the uh, other side should be an MET of about 33, 35. 33. Roger that. And that's an MET of 33, 35. Atlanta, she have a go to swap to the B water controller on APU-3.
Go ahead. Put the arm in the position for the plume and pitch pit contamination experiment. It kind of gives some interesting video if you want to look at downlink. Yes, we're looking in the windows. Great smiles. Sunglasses too, Ken. Story, we thought you only had uh, KU video through the East Tedris. We've got it the entire West Pass here. Hi, Jim Hall. That's a Louisiana smile? Yes, it is. Hi, Jerry Ross.
Atlantis, Houston. Yeah, I don't have the resolution you all do, but I see there's a coming up on a clear area over Canada right now. I don't have your exact location. North of Great Lakes, it is clear. But I didn't want you to miss it. It's great looking country. We're about a minute to a hand over to Tedra Seas. Okay, Story, and what time are you going to want to start the downlink of the glow of the uh, armist camera and the recording? I'll catch you on Tedra Seas.